Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be talking about this tropical wave which has been increasing its chances for one development and possibly becoming a hurricane. As you can see on satellite, our tropical wave is still pretty healthy. A lot of thunderstorm activity is occurring at the moment. And then back over into the United States, we are monitoring a frontal boundary that is eventually going to drape down into the country, bringing in some cooler air and potentially our first snow in the United States this year. So we're going to be talking about that. And also that cold front is going to be bringing some chances for severe weather all the way from Kansas up into the Ohio Valley in the Appalachians. So in this video, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be forecasting that. Make sure you guys are in the know. But before we get started, there's a new thing on YouTube, something called Hype Points. If you guys hype up this video using your Hype Points, it's below kind of in the comments you get to scroll right couple times near the comments to see the hype points if you use them for this channel you actually give us a better chance of being discovered on youtube so please consider doing that as it will be pretty helpful also make sure you hit that like and subscribe button but let's go ahead and get right into it first starting off with our tropical wave out over here in the atlantic as you can see over the next two days our chances have increased that this storm will develop as you can see there's a 30 percent chance of this storm developing into tropical storm gabrielle over the next two days and over the next seven days we're talking about a 70 percent chance so chances are definitely increasing that we could have tropical storm gabrielle and actually on the models chances are also increasing that this could become another hurricane potentially our second hurricane of the year here in the Atlantic. If we put this satellite in motion, you can see that we are seeing plenty of healthy convection on our storm right now. Coming over to the visible satellite, you can also see there's a little bit of a swirl trying to get started, but still not really seeing anything compact or super organized yet. So I don't think this thing's going to get designated today, potentially tomorrow or the next day, according to models. But overall, it is looking like a pretty healthy system. And given the fact that it is this low in latitude off of Africa and still traveling pretty far to the south, definitely got to be paying Paying attention to this system, especially over here in the Lesser Antilles, over here near Puerto Rico. And maybe if the models continue to consolidate and maybe show a closer approach to the United States, we might have to be watching out for this storm somewhere near Florida or North and South Carolina, potentially over here in the East Coast. But again, still big question marks over here, but we're going to try to break that down as good as possible. So let's go ahead and look over to the models and see what we can figure out about this storm. So the first thing I always look at is the sea surface temperatures just to kind of get a background understanding of of what this storm is capable of and as you guys can see this storm is currently sitting in around 28 degrees celsius so water temperatures are not going to be an issue if the environment does get a little bit more conducive for tropical development and as you can see in the technical path of this storm which it could come close or over the lesser antilles close or into puerto rico or just to the north of you guys definitely still some warm water temperatures since hurricane Aaron has come through this area they have had some time to recover and we're sitting around those 28 to 30 degrees Celsius temperatures, which is plenty. Again, you need above 27 degrees Celsius to really sustain tropical activity. And that's exactly what we're seeing here on our water temperature map. Now looking out into the future at our patterns to see if we see any changes as of right now, still generally models are in agreement that we're going to have this low pressure system come into the United States and that could bring some snow chances. So we'll be talking about that definitely here in a little bit and also some severe weather chances in the United States. But generally around the United States, it's kind of acting like a barrier right now for any storms that could come, at least in the short term. But this storm is pretty still pretty far away from the United States. We're just talking about eight to nine days away if it does even make a close approach. But generally, we do have a high pressure system out over the Atlantic. That is what is currently steering our storm to the west. You see this 591 line and some of these red that is indicating some higher pressure and that storm's going to really just ride on the southern portion of this 591 line all the way until it gets closer to the, to the Antilles. So if weakness builds a little bit earlier than that and maybe our storm is a little bit stronger, it could sneak up to the north a little bit more efficiently earlier. But if it's a little bit weaker of a storm, it will ride this 591 line all the way into the Caribbean. So definitely got to keep an eye on where this high pressure system is setting up and how strong our storm is at the time. But generally, this high pressure system is going to be staying there for quite quite a while and this low pressure system is going to come in kind of nudge against this system creating a little bit of a weakness but still a decently strong high pressure system you can see that we do still have the low pressure popping up here on the GFS model so that's where our tropical system would be that would probably by this point be Gabriel or Gabriel as I continue to push this forward you can see that generally our low pressure system kind of picks up a little bit of a weakness here uh, in our high pressure system and eventually starts to track to the north pretty early here on the GEFS or sorry the GFS and then eventually rockets off to the north so as you can see this high pressure system could play a big role we see this 591 line a lot further to the south as this develops 
we could definitely see this thing take a lot more of a st uh, further south track. You can see we're about 186 hours out. That means we do still have plenty of time. That's about seven to eight days out from right now. So a lot of things could still change. Still got to monitor this high pressure system, but still not a whole lot of indications that this is going to hit land, but we do have some ensemble members getting pretty close on the long range. So yeah, there's your steering currents. Let's come over here to our moisture, just kind of see what's going to happen. Greens are a lot of moisture. Browns are the drier air. And as you can see early on, it's going to be dealing with some of that drier air. So again, you know, this is going to probably fluctuate. It's either going to start to strengthen here shortly and turn into a tropical storm or might hit tropical storm strength and fall apart and then kind of reorganize it is going to struggle initially with this dry air so that'll be important if this kind of influences the storm for a long time we could definitely see this thing take a little bit more of a western track but if gabrielle can or future gabrielle can battle it efficiently enough and get that strengthening a little bit earlier on you can see it definitely wants to take that northern turn there so definitely gonna watch where this dry air sets up that's also an important factor uh, of our storm looking at our shear environment you can tell that at at least right now, our storm is battling a little bit of shear as it travels further off to the west away from Africa. And it's going to continue to do that until pretty much about here where it kind of lets up a lot around the storm. But you can see that we do have a little bit of a surface or not a surface low, but probably an upper level low that is going to be causing some shear pretty much for its entire life. You can see how they're like kind of traveling together. Here would be Gabrielle and you have this little surface low, some spin and some shear that will be it, it traveling and kind of hanging around the storm for a while. And it's not until that surface low starts to kind of die off and get to our sorry, upper low starts to die off and, you know, kind of fall apart where it and then it's really at that point where we see um, potential future Gabrielle strengthen and go further up to the north so again big question mark still on what this storm could do but at least for now does still kind of seem like at least the GFS is is hinting uh, that this could track to the north so let's come over to our ensembles try to get a better average in what is possible here for our tracks and intensities so here's the EPS model the Euro model this is uh again is an ensemble member which means we get a bunch of different model runs all at the same time and and you can see all those individual model runs by each one of these individual numbers. And as I push this forward, you can see that we start to see some more yellow on the map that is indicating that some of our members are strengthening. So definitely could have a tropical storm by the time we get into the 8th or the 9th of September. And as you can see, there's a lot of members that get pretty close or into the Lesser Antilles in near Puerto Rico. Uh, potentially there's a tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane by this point but most of our members are continuing to recurve to the north with that weakness in the high pressure system and then also some low pressure kind of working its way into the united states kind of helping to grab this storm as well and you can see most of our model members do bring this away from the coast now we do uh, by the time we get to 360 hours out which again is super la la land there are a large span of possibilities here we have some models indicating this thing could be down near florida we got some models indicating most most models indicating this is going to be out to sea and then some bringing it pretty close kind of like what Aaron did but again this is 360 hours out so our spread is so wide right now our uncertainty is so high right now it's really hard to say anything other than you know maybe the Puerto Rico and the lesser Antilles should be paying attention to storm for now the east coast probably doesn't need to right now but just know that generally this storm could track either pretty close or do a northern term uh not a whole lot of ensemble support at least for right now of a direct impact let's come over here to the GEFS and you can see it does do a similar thing here we got a lot of those model members a little bit further to the north than the EPS and a little interesting thing I want to point out here on the GEFS is that it does try to develop a uh, little low pressure system tropical low over here in the Caribbean that would be a little bit more of a homegrown system these are not part of this signal up here so maybe it's hinting at something but again these little hints at 228 hours out really not super helpful we're gonna have to wait until we get into around five days out to see if this can consolidates into an actual signal but if that does it might be the storm that we really have to pay attention to but for right now not really too concerned about it until we get more certainty but yeah generally the same kind of thing goes north and no real models at least for now hitting land but again there's a lot of time for these models to, sh to shift we get wide uncertainty that could consolidate trip down to the south we see it all the time or, or, or it could, they could consolidate to a more northerly out to sea track so again it's a lot of uncertainty we really don't know what this storm is going to do all we know is that the environment seems to be favorable for some strengthening in the long term 
Another thing we have going on out in the Pacific, actually, and this is actually kind of close to Hawaii, which is still part of the United States. You have a strengthening hurricane that is happening out here. You can even see an eye is trying to develop. And the only reason I'm talking about this is because some of our ensemble members are bringing this generally pretty darn close. You see about 192 hours out from this thing, you know, even getting close to Hawaii. You can see just a little portion of Hawaii there on our map. But you can do, do see that there are a lot of tracks that are bringing it pretty close. A lot of them also, which are weakening. So the storm will be weakening as it approaches as it seems but I, I just want to let you guys know in Hawaii that I am looking at this storm I'm watching it just not a whole lot of certainty yet of what it's going to do for your area we're still pretty far out uh, but generally it should track either pretty close or might be a threat maybe a tropical storm threat or a low end hurricane at worst so just something to keep an eye on the water temperatures really aren't super favorable out there just for sustained hurricane activity but you know if this thing moves fast enough it, it might end up doing something so I am watching it and before we start talking about temperatures and severe weather I do just want to note some thing here check this out as our next tropical system comes in and around the third we could end up seeing our first snowfall of the year you can see up there in the uh, northeastern tip of minnesota we actually are seeing some snow on our models that might even be enough to bring some accumulation look at this we have uh, some scant areas of snow of around one to two inches maybe even in some isolated areas getting close to three inches up there maybe even a little snow up there in northern wisconsin in the up of michigan but it seems most of it is going to be in minnesota for now now keep in mind uh, some models aren't as bullish there could still be some snowflakes but also mix in with a bunch of rain so these could definitely be lower than what this model is saying here but uh a little signal here for some potential snow as those temperatures really start to drop I mean you can see we're gonna be you know in 31 33 degrees which you'd say is above freezing it is but above the ground it's also gonna be pretty cold as it ejects down to the south meaning the snowflakes will last pretty long and it's only gonna be the surface temperatures that are gonna start to melt it so that snow might not stick around for a while but it's definitely pretty interesting to see the first snowfall of the year reminiscing and thinking about winter uh, already yeah in terms of severe weather we are expecting a marginal risk of severe weather out over here near south and north dakota also going into minnesota as well main threat's going to be damaging winds and some hail not really too much of an indication of a tornado threat really at all today but as you can see we are going to have a little bit of a frontal boundary draped down to the south that will run into some moisture up there and we could see some thunderstorms develop tonight at around 10 a.m and that will move down into like minneapolis by the time we get to 12 p.m and you know it should clear out and then maybe we get another round going into the nighttime at around 8 to 9 p.m. for the Minneapolis area before storms start to really fall apart overnight. Some thunderstorms, though, could be possible over there in Wisconsin. Down over here in the southeast, we are expecting some thunderstorm activity today as well. As you can see, as we get into around 10, 12 p.m., could have some thunders and shower storms over here near Mississippi and northern Alabama. And those are going to be hit or miss, so it's going to be hard to tell exactly where those land. Maybe something over there near Nashville by 6 p.m. And then generally, as the daylight heating goes away, our shower and thunderstorm chances really drop off a cliff back over here in the pacific southwest i do want to note something we are likely gonna have a hurricane kind of come into mexico here and eventually that moisture could make it up into like arizona or new mexico which could bring some pretty big flooding chances it's gonna be around this weekend as it moves into new mexico that could eventually move into northern texas and then that could eventually actually form into its own little storm further down the line got to keep an eye on for severe and flooding chances with this guy as it moves throughout because there's going to be a lot of precipitable moisture with this storm, which means there's definitely a chance that we could see some flooding with this, given that it has a lot of that tropical moisture. And I'm not talking about like tropical storm or hurricane impacts, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on for that flooding and uh, some potential for severe weather. And as you can see, as I push the HRRR model, our future radar forward, you can see some instances of flooding already possible over there near Buckeye as we go into the 4th at around uh, 1 a.m. So we're definitely keeping an eye uh, on that. And then uh, severe weather-wise, moving into day two here, after those showers and thunderstorms go through Minneapolis, our frontal boundary is going to push down further into the south where we could see eventually some convergence down here near Wichita and Kansas City where we actually have a slight risk. There could be a small tornado chance with this but it's mainly going to be damaging winds and hail do have a decent amount of instability there so we could definitely get some stronger storms and a little bit of a significant tornado parameter indication over there north of wichita in between uh, kind of wichita and topeka there and the reason why that is is there's not going to be 
a whole lot of shear to support this storm but we are gonna have a decent amount of storm relative helicity along that frontal boundary so if you get the right storm at the right time you could definitely maybe see a tornado out there but generally I do think that the main threat is gonna be those damaging winds and isolated hail threat as this comes south of Topeka into Wichita and then eventually that falls apart as we go into the nighttime hours and our daytime heating goes away and then going into day three which is the day after tomorrow you can see our frontal boundary continues to shift down to the south and east and you can see that we're gonna have that frontal boundary really extend anywhere from Pittsburgh down into West Virginia down through Nashville and Memphis so that cooler air will be coming in on the back side of this as you can see it's gonna be in the 50s and 60s around most of the area out here so definitely an, a pretty stout cold front that's gonna be coming through our area and we, we're not still kind of in the range of our short term models being able to see you know the, all the small details yet but this is the closest we can get there's a chance for severe weather from Tennessee all the way up into Pennsylvania through West Virginia going into Virginia itself there is some surface based Cape it looks like most of it is down over here near Kentucky maybe enough up there in Pennsylvania to support some severe weather maybe a tornado chance as well if we come over to our 850 millibar winds you can see near those storms we do have some shear but the question really is will it be behind or near the storms enough uh, to promote more some tornado activity and you can also see that we are going to generally have enough forcing for these storms to eventually fire so there is some chances for severe weather also some damaging winds some hail maybe even some tornado chances as well we could get an upgrade on this if models come more into consensus but again we're about three days out we really need to be in the day one or day two category to be able to really make a detailed forecast on what these storms are going to be capable of as our short-term models come into play but yeah folks that's going to be it for me again thank you so much for tuning into the channel make sure you hit that like and subscribe and try out the hype button i don't know what it does but hey maybe it could be helpful <laughs> but yeah i'll see you guys uh on the next video peace